Okay, we're going to take a look at Regents Review Test G. This is problem number 25. They're asking you to graph a square root function. Um, whenever you're graphing, as we've said, don't forget to establish a scale on your graph. And then you're going to go to the y equals on your graphing calculator, and you're going to input the function negative, making sure it's on the outside, obviously, of the square root symbol. But the x plus 3 needs to stay underneath the square root symbol. And when you do that, you will get a table of values that looks like this, that you are then able to graph your function. Please make sure also that you label your graph. Um, when you are finished with your graph, if you think about your rules of transformations, we know that the negative in front of a function will reflect it over the x-axis. We also know that a positive 3 inside of the symbol is going to move the parent function 3 units to the left. So a square root parent function looks like this. So reflecting it, okay, we'll turn it upside down like this. And then, as I said, it gets moved 3 units to the left. So that's just a little quick check after to um, assure yourself, I hope, that what you came up with was the correct answer. Okay, moving to number 26. So in this graph, B of X, the, all they want us to do is to tell how, describe how the graph has changed to form the graph H of X. Okay, so we don't actually see H of X graphed. We see the original function B of X graphed here. And then they tell us that by using function notation, they tell us what transformations are going to occur. So inside of the symbol of the parentheses, minus 2, means that we are going to move 2 to the right. And here, of course, we know that means we're going to move 3 down. And we just have to state that on the bottom. OK, going to number 27. They want us to consider the pattern that we see here with the squares. So the first thing you want to do is go through and count them up. We have 2, we have 4, we have 8. They want to know which type of model, linear or exponential, would be used to determine the number of squares in the future of this pattern. And then, of course, we're going to explain our answer. Well, we know that a linear function changes with a constant rate of change by continually adding the same number. Okay, so here we're going from 2 to 4 to 8. So here you might think, oh, we're adding 2, or we could be multiplying by 2. Then from 4 to 8, we see, well, that's multiplication by 2. So adding 2 each time is not going to work, which means it's going to be an exponential function where we continually multiply. And that's what we need to explain. Okay, and this would actually be the function rule for this pattern. Okay, the number of squares would be going in in place of this exponent n. Oops, I got one more on the bottom of that page there. Okay, number 28. When you multiply these two polynomials, um, Pat found the product to be this polynomial right here. The only thing is Pat doesn't have that in standard form, so then when he's asked for the leading coefficient, it would behoove him to write it in standard form right here, standard form being highest exponent coming first, and then they're going down in descending order, and this is technically x to the 0 power. So going down, when it's in standard form, your leading coefficient is the number in front of the highest exponent here which is going to be first in line in your polynomial. Okay, going to number 29. They want to know if the sum of 3 radical 2 and 4 radical 2 is rational or irrational. So we have two different responses that would work here. Um, both of them state that this would be irrational. And one reason, I usually go with this one, is because if you look at this, this is irrational because the square root of 2 is not a perfect square. The answer is a number that goes on and on forever and never ends and never repeats. So even when you take 
square root of 2, which is a non-perfect square, and you multiply it by 3 or any number, it still stays a non-perfect square. Okay, so both of these are irrational. When you add an irrational and an irrational, you will always get an irrational answer. The other way, which you could do up here, is to find out what the value is. What's the value of 3 radical 2? What's the value of 4 radical 2? Add them together. See if your answer is rational or irrational. And as it says there, it will be irrational. So either way works. Number 30. The graph below shows two functions. We have g of x, which is an absolute value function, and then we have f of x going through that. They want to know all the values of x. Okay, so the x values when f of x equals g of x. When they want to know when one function e equals the other, that is going to occur at their points of intersection. So following it down here, following it down here, because we're looking for x values, this is when x is 1 and x is negative 3. Okay, looking at number 31. They want us to find the zeros of this quadratic, so that means that they want us to solve it and find the roots. So two different ways you can do this. Um, over here... What you could do, because this looks like completing the square, right? We could add 49 to the other side, and then we can take the square root of both sides. Be careful here. Remember, when you take the square root of a number, you end up with two roots, a positive and a negative. Remember that a quadratic, the most number of roots it can have is two, because it can cross the x-axis in a maximum of two places, or only one, or none, okay? But just be aware of that. Always be thinking we could possibly have two roots. So then once you do this, then what we're going to do is we've got a positive 7 is equal to x minus 3, or the negative 7 is equal to x minus 3. Then you have a very simple algebraic equation to solve. You find out the roots are 10 and negative 4. Okay? Or you could take, and be careful, I also wor I worry about this, um, Make sure you repeat the binomial twice when it's being squared. A lot of you want to say, oh, this is x squared minus 9 or x squared plus 9, when in fact it's not. Look what it really is. It's x squared minus 6x plus 9. So be very careful. This is not correct and often done. Okay, there's no shortcut here. You have to write the binomial out twice. Use a distributive property to end up with this resulting trinomial. Then minus 49, combine like terms.